Aloha mamas and welcome to episode number 10 of the mama mindset podcast. I hope that these are landing upon your soul in a way that serves you and adds value to your life. And just as the way you add value to my life, being here, investing in yourself, choosing to show up for yourself in this magnificent way, making a commitment to you and to what you need to nourish and continue along your path. And there are times when we are surviving along our paths, <laughs> riding the struggle bus, beep, beep, and getting done what we perceive we need to do on our to-do list. And there are times when we know, we feel that we are thriving. We are in our element and we even feel confident throwing away the to-do lists. And I have claimed that I am in a season of doing this because what's a priority for me will get done and it will come to the forefront of my mind. And I triage the things that I need to triage as they come in my day. And instead of kind of measuring my worth for that day in terms of how many things I was able to check off. And I mean, I used to have a to-do list written down with little check marks boxes and on my phone and not on calendars and all kinds of places, because it just made me feel better rewriting it, I guess, in various spots and trying to make it pretty in different journals and with different colors. But all of it was a form of just tasks that I thought were ingredients to a recipe that would give me peace of mind and a feeling of satisfaction at the end of the day. And I think hitting those line by line is a little bit of a dopamine reward. The dopamine center in our brain is the, that reward pathway, the same pathway that lights up when we have chocolate or get a compliment. And I think a to-do list can be a form of that. It's also a form of us staying busy because when we're busy, it's a place where we can exist without having to really get in touch with some of those deeper emotions that are coming and trying to talk to us and trying to be our teachers as we've discussed before, and, and really moving toward that future version of ourselves that's beckoning us forward. She is there. She's patient. She is waiting for when we will lay down the to-do list, lay down the, the need, the desire, and the compulsion to be busy. And there's nothing wrong with being in a season of being busy or, or really needing your to-do list. But I think and feel that they do preclude us. They are a barrier to the creative genius that lies within you. They're really the inner visionary that is you. And I think that the societal narratives are very kind toward to-do lists and being busy. And we see that model for us. We see various products out there for us, ways to keep us all in check with our to-do list. Um, and then as moms, you know, we're managing what we perceive are other people's calendars and to-do lists. And yes, we are managing the appointments medically for babies and children and, and the school calendars and extracurricular activities. And oftentimes we're the keepers of the important dates and birthdays and anniversaries for the constellation of our families and our friends, our chosen family. And so it is, it's a lot for us to, to keep. Um, a harness on and just have it on our radar. And something I've been doing recently has been if it's somebody's birthday or something important, I'll put it as like an all day event on my phone. So it shows up at the very top. And I just glance at that in the morning and it kind of cues me, okay, it's this person's birthday today. I can reach out to them. Or I have like a coffee life chat today with this friend or the trash truck. <laughs> literally have some, my phone, the trash trucks coming to our neighborhood this morning at nine. So maybe we get out there for the show and my son likes to say, scoop it, lift it, dump it. And we have four trash cans in our neighborhood because everybody walks their trash to the middle and we can watch like the trash can come and get all four of these orange trash cans. And it's a thrill. I love it too. And so maybe play around with the way that your to-do list may be hijacking some of your time and your energy. Another thing I've been doing is I love celebrating birthdays. It's something that I have done more of out of my words of affirmation, love language. It's something I've done I, since ever since I can remember in high school, I used to make people like poster signs in my first period history class 
Miss Bell's class, I can remember doing that. And into my adult years, I would go through and write on people's walls, like wall graffiti on Facebook, happy birthday, and try to make it less than, not that there's anything wrong with the HBD or some gift, but just make it a little bit more personal because that feels good to me. And it's part of my love language. And more recently I've kind of released that need. And I still feel like I, I love to connect with people on their birthdays, but I do it more from a sense of if I have their personal contact information, like if we're, we have each other's phone number, or have a way of reaching out to them, then I, then I'll do that in a personal way. And it's just been a, uh, an interesting shift for me. And yeah, so I think there's a lot to do with playing around with our to-do list and how you manage your time and how you give yourself an assignment of worth at the end of the day that might may or may not be based on your to-do list. And if you can start to look in the self-reflection mirror and that self-reflection pond that I hope this space is for you to say, is my to-do list serving me is the way that I'm writing down things and kind of measuring out my day, adding value to my life. Because I know for me, a lot of times it would just be transcribing the same list minus the one or two things I was able to accomplish for the next day and the next day on forward, because so many new things come into our, into our environment, into our sphere as we're going through the day that we're, we, we have to reprioritize all the time. And we really are amazing at that. And sometimes we need help writing things down so that it maybe doesn't slip our mind, but I think it comes from a, this is where the mama mindset part comes in. I think it comes from a feeling of fear and scarcity and lack that if we don't write it down right now, we're going to forget it. And then the consequences will come and we might offend this person or that person or let our child down or any number of, of scenarios that we play out in our mind that we role play, that we dramatize in our, in our brain. And I think this is an opportunity to pivot an opportunity to ask, what is this fear and anxiety here to show me? Can I, can I say it out loud? Can I figure out where it's coming from and, and maybe release that particular scenario that may or may not even be true. And can I trust and have faith in myself that I will accomplish what needs to happen today? And rarely, at least for myself, were the items on the to-do list, things that were about my own self-care, which self-care is healthcare. Self-care is never selfish. So rarely was it about the things that nourished me exercising, moving my body. Although I did, I would put that down, but journaling and prayer and meditation, reading, doing progressive muscle relaxation, things that really ground me in my own sense of neutrality and free me up to my creative side. Those were rarely part of my to-do list action items. They were all tangible things to get done. And oftentimes related to my interpersonal relationships and what I felt like I needed to be doing for, for other people. And that can be a depleting looking at our to-do list. And that way can, can be really an eye-opening exercise of just, this is how we feel we need to be expending our energy. And it's a vital energy every day that we spend toward getting that to-do list done. So I want you to play around with dropping your to-do list entirely or managing it in a different way, doing something different. Because when you choose to make that pivot from being busy all the time, and I, I, we, we use busyness as a crutch. We do because when we're busy, we don't have to face some of the deeper emotions and things that are, that are, that are there to serve us, to prosper us, to help us move forward to our next level of who we are. But busyness is a not just a crutch, but it's also a coping mechanism, a way of staying where we perceive it's safe and where we have excelled day after day after day. And we do a lot of good things in the busy zone. A lot of great things get accomplished. I mean, that house kit is clean. Those dishes are done. People are, the kids are off to school and they're clothed and fed and bathed and teeth are brushed. And we've reached out to everyone and everything. We've, we've restocked things and we've gone to meetings and we've accomplished our work day, whatever, whatever it is, 
that is our zone of excellence where we're getting a lot done. There's, there's these uh, zone of excellence and also zone of genius. Um, that is an interesting concept, I feel. And those are, for me, my zone of excellence was staying in my lane as a pediatrician and getting, I mean, really doing amazing things as a clinician, caring for children, making really complex diagnoses and caring for them in the inpatient hospital setting and, and also meeting their parents in their time of crisis and, and uh, stress and, and walking through the family through the process with their child. And also giving anticipatory guidance and helping parents in the office with well child checks. That was my zone of excellence. And it was a place of where I flourished and I did a lot of great things and I claimed that. My zone of genius for me personally was building upon that version of myself, which who knew that she was a healer. She was somebody who excelled in medicine. She was somebody who could pursue her passions and dreams and she knows how to, she knows how to put her, you know, blenders on and go and, and get whatever needs to be done accomplished. She will sacrifice and she will work hard. And she has a lot of grit that got her through passing physical fitness tests in college soccer and all the board exams that led me here. However, her, her genius zone was inviting her into a new space, creating something completely different that was off her beaten path, off of her well-defined course, you know, which for me was med school and then residency and then a fellowship and then a career in clinical medicine. And my zone of genius was listening to the inner artist within me, having faith in the spiritual side of me, which connects with people on a very serendipitous, very deep, soulful level, knowing that when I was meeting with you, the mamas in the hospital, in the exam room, in the newborn delivery room, and in your postpartum rooms, or in my daily everyday life, that that was where this side of me really came forth. She, she emerged in such a natural and organic and raw, real fascinating and in flow way where she was just in her element. She was unfiltered and unedited, just like I'm coming down and sitting here and talking with you guys today. She wasn't forcing anything. It was all, all out of faith and all out of who she was made, the fabric of how she was created. And with that creative energy that was divinely placed in me, I can come forth with this beautiful energy and offer it to you and serve it to you. And I realize that I can honor all of the path that I've, that has forged me here and honor that and also lean into what, who organically I am and the person, the, the woman without the to-do lists and without the, for me, what was the grind of working these 90 hour work weeks and coming in to this space and showing up, like I've told you before, on with no agenda when I sit down here, zero. I don't have a topic written out. I don't have anything that I'm reading. I don't even edit these before I publish these podcasts. I don't even, ha I don't have like a fancy intro song or any of those more polished pieces because I really desire and want this to be <clears throat> me honoring commitment I made to myself, which was to show up here. It's almost like a visual diary and journal. And for you inviting you into this space, because I see your inner brilliance. I see and know that your inner genius zone is beckoning you forward. <clears throat> and that this isn't about me looking super polished and poised. It's about me living into my vulnerability. And today into my fatigue, I was come, trying to come up with different reasons. I maybe could choose to film tomorrow. And that would have been fine if I honored that, but you know, I feel like we all surf this fatigue wave. Let's be honest as women, as mothers, because we take on a lot and we take on a lot in the form of our to-do lists and in the form of things that aren't on our to-do list that come to us throughout the day. And we take on and manage the emotions and the growing, evolving personalities of our 
babies and children. And we, as gifted empaths, take on the energetic culture and climate of our house and our friends around us and our families. So even in different FaceTimes or phone calls, we, we take on all of that energetic environment. And in that we are in that constellation of, uh, of our, of our family of origin and our, now our chosen family, we, we, we still find a way to shine bright with that. But at times we, we feel really depleted from taking on all of that energy and also physically all of the things that we put upon ourselves throughout the day and the way that we get the way that we don't oftentimes honor sleep as medicine, which I'm really excited about my sleep as medicine course to come out for you all soon. And I do, I believe sleep is medicine. And lately I have been creating into late hours of the night writing and coming here with these life chats and finding creative pockets to take naps, which naps are just divine sauce of life. I just love naps. And there were many years where I didn't take naps and I just feel that naps are a super elixir. They're like, we don't even need all these superfoods. It's like naps, naps as my superfood. Uh, and I'm not really like a good 15 minute power napper. I need like more of a solid hour plus. Um, anyway, I feel really compelled that fatigue comes, tiredness comes in many different forms. And it's also a teacher. It's something that I used to really shun or really be uncomfortable with, I guess. Like I felt like it was this huge whatever the antithesis of a compliment is, I guess. Um, I just, when people would say, you look really tired today. For me, that was just like one of those really deflating comments that immediately I'm like, wah, wah, like, where do we go from here with this conversation? Like you look really tired today. And maybe now the empath in me and more of the observer part of me could offer several scenarios to that. Maybe, maybe that person was trying in their own empathic way to open a portal and a door to talk about the, the factors that might've been presenting, um, in my life for that presentation. Um, and I think maybe just as a words of affirmation person, like being told you look really tired today. I was just like, all right, awesome. Um, <laughs> because I was so used to having to perform and be on. And for me looking tired or not coming with like peppy energy was just a non-negotiable, something that like I couldn't allow to happen. So I think in my own, when I look within and what, what that comment meant to me and what I allowed it to mean was, okay, I'm obviously not polished enough today and putting, putting on like enough energy for this person to think that I'm like of worth in this interaction right now. And so I wonder what you feel like when you're told that comment or if somebody's like, huh, have you been getting enough sleep lately? And what really, what we can invite ourselves to examine with, with fatigue is we have fatigue. Most commonly we associate it with physical fatigue. Like, okay, I feel tired because I didn't get enough sleep. And it comes from this, I think feelings of lack and scarcity we're, we're scared that if we don't get X number of hours, we're going to be, we, we subscribe to this method. It's like, okay, if I don't get my 68 hours of sleep, I'm, I'm not going to be well adjusted tomorrow. And maybe that's true. Maybe, you know, how much sleep your body requires to feel rejuvenated and nourished. Maybe you're so used to a chronic lack of sleep that you don't even know how many hours you need. You just take what you can get, which a lot of us do. Um, we also, though, I feel compelled to offer can be fatigued and tired in many other ways, which impact us in, in, in a profound sense. We could be fatigued emotionally because we are not filling our own emotional cup that comes from doing the non-negotiable things every day that speak to your own love language that are refueling for you, whether it's spending time alone or it's writing or journaling or moving your body, or it could be you taking time with friends or going on date night, whatever it is that in your mind you need for, uh, your own self-care, which is your health care and never selfish. 
that could be leading to your fatigue. It could also be spiritual fatigue. I think I've talked before about the vertical alignment that I know that as mamas, we are meant to be in divine vertical alignment with ourselves. And when we're looking horizontally for satisfaction or worth or for fulfillment, we will not find it there. And we oftentimes do that scrolling social media, comparing ourselves to other people. And we, when we feed our spiritual hunger, our spiritual sense and our spiritual longing, and we replenish that and spiritually we are fed and we are fulfilled that goes a long way in our, in the whole fatigue process. So there's many different aspects of your life that you can look at. And it's very fascinating to find out where, where are you depleted at this point in time? It could be, there's many different ways, like socially, relationally, in your occupational, or maybe intellectual, you could, you could say, cause I'm not, I don't feel like we always have to always have an occupation, but it could be an intellectual pursuit. It's what is it that you love to be learning? I think that we're all lifelong learners in some way. We need to stimulate that part of our brain financial, uh, and it, and as well as spiritual, emotional, and physical, and all of those contribute to our overall well being, And they're all part of us. And oftentimes we are negating one at the expense of another. And so in striving for, I hesitate to use the word balance either. I think it's a slippery word kind of honoring all that goes into who we are as a complex woman, a complex visionary, complex artist, complex mama. Those, those are beautiful aspects of us. We are never too much. You are among, if you, if you've ever been told you're too much or too emotional, you are in good company here, queen, because we are, we are a lot and we are, we are many emotions and we are many roles and we are many things. And those all play into how amazing and wonderful you are. And so if you're feeling fatigued, like I am today, and it's really, I think what a loving exercise it can be is to examine and nourish and from an observer role, give yourself kind of go through and have gratitude for all the things that you've got accomplished and all of the ways that you have expended your energy for other people. And then also go into a nurturing nourishing. This is the feminine energy realm where you can start deciding, choosing, how will you, will you protect your energy in the same way that you've been doing it? Or is there tweaks and changes you can make to protecting your, your energy, having boundaries, saying no to certain things, having non-negotiable ways that you nourish yourself every single day. Can you release your to-do list? Is that something that's really serving you? Releasing our to-do list sounds so scary, so foreign, and so radical to a lot of people. I know to me at one point it did. And now I can't even tell you the last time I sat down to write down a to-do list. It's, it's, it's just not something I do anymore. And I'm, I love it. I'm not sure that I'll, I'll go back to that because I have a lot of trust that I'll accomplish what I need to accomplish that day. And that I, I am more than my list and I'm choosing to spend my energy in vital ways that serves me my family, those around me, and hopefully, ideally you, and you are such a valuable resource, your impact on this world, on this earth, on your family, on your babies, the ripples that the legacy of your life is already leaving in the circles where you are in this world are so massive and giving away your energy to things like to-do list or comments about whether you look tired or not, or limiting beliefs. Like if you don't get enough coffee or enough sleep, you're not going to do well tomorrow. You know how to flourish. You are, you are more than a survivor. You are someone who thrives. And that's why you're here in the space of mama mindset, because you know, you were meant to thrive. You know, you were divinely chosen to live a life of meaning and of value and of peace that you weren't meant to exist in the overwhelm. That motherhood was not meant to be an overwhelming chapter for you for sure. I own and that we are all in the struggle bus sometimes and that it's colorful chaos, but 
our default state is to be thriving and to be inspired and to be creative and innovators and to be flourishing in this chapter. That's, that is where we're, that is our destiny, not to be frazzled coffee, having constant coffee infusions with mom buds off the side of our head and just barely making it through. We are more, you are more. And by choosing to do and take steps, which can seem scary and radical, but also super exciting and ultimately fulfilling, pivoting from your to-do list or just trusting. It's, it's faith. It's a trust in yourself. It's a pivot from fear to faith. You're at that intersection. You choose your unending book that we used to read when we were 90s kids. You're the, the, the next choice in the chapter of the story that you're writing is faith. Faith in your spiritual self. Faith that you were meant for more. Faith that you know the way. Faith that you don't need to be busy. Fill your life with to-do lists and things to do and social. You don't need to fill your social calendar. Maybe this weekend you actively work to subtract and have like a non, a weekend of non plans or sometime in the future, as much as, as much as you can, or as much serves you. I, I love those weekends. Now I think COVID brought us that opportunity. That's one gift out of that, where we were able to say, wow, you know, I don't have a lot of social commitments and this is actually very freeing and evaluating everything against that inner inner knowing, inner wisdom, your mama tuition of if this truly serves you, if paying attention in your body to how do you feel when you got that invitation, it it could be a nice, genuine, wonderful invitation from someone, but how did you feel in your body about it? Did you have resistance to it? And the answer is no, you know, no, thank you. And you can honor that person in, in another way. Protecting your energy, your vital, beautiful, creative, visionary energy is so important and making that commitment to yourself that you will build yourself up, that your self-care is part of your self-worth and that it is never selfish. It is your version of health care. It is literally the way that you will help preserve your body against the different stresses that happen physically, metabolically. And so paying attention to fatigue, not just physically, but the other forms of fatigue, mental, emotional, spiritual, that we've been talking about, I believe strongly from a medical and the creative spiritual side of me helps us be more resilient against different disease and different things that can come our way and cross our paths. And that is your, that is my desire for you to live in a state of vitality and prosperity and health. And from that space, be creative and offer that to other people. And that comes when you protect your own energy, when you're own, when you're your own bouncer at your own club, you know, you can have your dance parties. You don't have to always go to everyone else's dance parties. You can find, you will find yourself and your purpose, your mission, your vision, your unique flair and flavor of who you are in a season of submission and a season of surrender. That has happened for me over the past few years. And it's been so transformative and so transcending, very challenging, but it's what I'm here to di- to digest with you all and to offer for you all, because I desire for that too, for you. I'm still, I'm still going through that season and I'm still choosing that, but I am actively choosing to tune into what my intuition is saying to protect my energy and to examine what it is that's fatiguing me for today. I'm coming here super fatigued. And it's because I've been trading sleep for a lot of creativity and it's been fun. It's something I've, cho- I've I have chosen. I'm not a victim to it of the lack of sleep recently. So the physical fatigue that I feel it's, it's been a choice. And tonight I'm recording a lot earlier because I'm going to go and have like a delicious meditation and progressive relax body relaxation and just have a super restful slumber. But it's by choice that I've been doing this because I have been so excited to come and do these mama life chats and imagining them landing upon your soul in a really wonderful, vast, expansive way. And you are so, so important. You are so valuable. I see you. I have so much love for you. And I desire so much for you to 
pivot and transition forever from the overwhelm that you feel to peace. And that path is challenging, but it is very clear. It is choosing yourself. It is protecting your energy and it is evaluating the fatigue that you feel and what part of that fatigue is something that you can release? What part of that fatigue is something that is not serving you and not adding value to your life? We take on so much. We have the capacity to take on so much. It's, it's a remarkable feature of how we were made and, and how our divine feminine energy was literally sewn into every cell of DNA in our body. But when we place upon ourselves that nourishing, nurturing ability that we have, that as mothers comes alive and we, we marinate ourselves in that same sense of nourishing and nurturing from there, we really can evaluate what parts of our life are causing us fatigue and what parts are necessary and what parts are not. And it is a very freeing, liberating, and radical act of self-love and compassion to release that which is no longer serving you. And I'm inviting you to do, start with the exercise of your to-do list. It doesn't have to be getting rid of your to-do list entirely, but just going down that list with a very loving, lovingly critical eye and deciding what is it that can be subtracted from that. So a lot of times creating space in your life is about subtraction. We've, we've all done it with the Marie condoing and all the different ways we've gotten rid of what doesn't bring us joy in our closets. And the next step of that, the next iteration, the next level <laughs> up leveling your life is doing that with your time, your energy. So placing those boundaries around your life comes from and getting, protecting your own energy so that you can feed it to yourself so that you can put it into meaningful activities that bring you joy and that connect you more with your future self and where you're meant to be heading comes from the ability, the willingness, the choice to evaluate that, which you're giving your time, your energy and your power to, and deciding if it's truly worth pursuing if it serves you and those around you. And it gets to be fun. It gets to be fascinating. It gets to be an exercise in learning more about yourself and your habits and how you can pivot. So in the next chapter of your choose your own ending book and the story that you're writing, mama, I'm looking forward to hearing where you are going to, what pivots you're going to make. If the to-do list is serving you, if it's, if you're going to love it or list it and how it's, how it's going to go from here. But regardless of what you choose, what, I, what way you choose to evaluate your life, know that you are massively important. You are an absolute creative genius. And the ideas that are, have been divinely dropped into your soul, the dreams that you have are meant to come into this life and be birthed just like you birthed that beautiful baby and, and soak in that role of mama. You are meant to pursue the creative ideas that flow through you. And sometimes those creative ideas are being a little bit strangled by all of the other things that we try to throw into the pot every single day with what we're doing. And so this is meant to help you weed through the woods of all, all of the things that you add to your plate, which may not be necessary so that you can make space for yourself and for your own creative passions to emerge. And when you live into that boldly, proudly, courageously, you inspire yourself, your children, everyone around you, and you make this world better. And there's no one, no one else who can birth those ideas and implement them in the way that you were meant to. No one else ever will. And the time is now. It's not later when your babies are grown and, and, you, and we tell ourselves that those false limiting beliefs and those stories that we carry around that we'll, we, we can live into this passion or we can start this venture or we can open up that shop or we can create that website or we can write that book when that's, that's the if then statements I talked about before it's living into this if then, and those are so limiting and those are self self-imposed. And I'm here to help you challenge those with, with massive aloha and love. So hope you marinate in all of that. 
and looking forward to hearing um, what comes from that. And if you're feeling tired today, like me, may it be an invitation for us to just lavish upon ourselves some self-care, whether it's the massage, it could be a mental massage, just complimenting ourselves and all the things that we're doing well in life and, and, and also just claiming and owning everything that we've been doing that has gone into that fatigue and, and then pivoting to nourishing and how we're going to nurture, how we're going to replenish, how we're going to rejuvenate. So massive aloha your way. And I look forward to our next life chat and some more with mamas to sit down. Uh, mamas that I'm going to sit down with to come. You can email me as always at aloha at mama mindset.com or hop onto my, uh, email list where I send out kind of episode recaps and other things that come across my, my mama brain and that I want to download into yours at uh, mamamindset.com. And thank you so much for this time, mostly for investing in yourself. And I want to hear about your ideas and what you might like to hear from me about in future episodes. So email me there as well. Aloha mama.